There is nothing more special than a young child putting on their first pair of dance shoes, taking their first dance lesson, and the anticipation of their first performance. Research shows that healthy dance is wonderful for children. From improved academic performance and brain development, to creativity, risk-taking, emotional maturity, and more. I relate personally to what the research says because that's my story. My name is Mary Bodden. I started dance at age 11 and grew up with dance as a central part of my identity. By the time I was in high school, I studied ballet with a master teacher named Sheila Darby. She founded Chiquetti USA. Eventually, that led me to receive a BA in modern dance from UC Riverside, teach on the community college level, lead a church dance ministry and choreograph presentations for over 20 years, and write a book. I am the poster child for a good experience in dance. But something has changed. During the last decade, there has been a cultural shift from healthy educational children's dance to harmful, hypersexualized children's dance at younger and younger ages. As we look through the lens of an unfiltered media culture, we see that the art of dance has been distorted. We are normalizing what is not normal. Impressionable youth longing to fit in perceive that this is natural, appropriate, and necessary. But you and I both know this isn't true. In June of 2019, I interviewed national experts in Washington, D.C. at the National Center on Sexual Exploitation Coalition Summit to get their viewpoint on healthy versus harmful dance. Let's listen to part of what they had to say. Increasingly in our society, we're sexualizing children. And dance is one of these ways that we're really contributing to the sexualization of children. Harmful dance, it seems to be far more about um, titillating the audience, and particularly this becomes really disturbing when we're seeing young girls increasingly having incredibly hypersexualized dance moves, hypersexualized um, costumes. Women have been groomed through dance to think of themselves as objects, to think of themselves as less than human. What we are doing to children, stripping them of their youth. Now we're putting them into a public arena and turning them into sex objects, so I find it very, very destructive. I remember speaking to a friend of mine whose daughter was in dance, and he wasn't sure if it was dance or if it was something that was sexually um, being generated to turn on the audience. Crowds literally cheer children on and like in these, perform these sexualized performances. We see parents actually commending them and clapping. I was very unaware of the way we moved. It was sending a message to the audience, and it was really a grooming process. You go into dance classes, there's a grooming aspect that happens as soon as you walk in. You have to follow the instructions, you have to follow the way the teacher teaches to fit in with everybody else. For me, there really was a, a grooming process from a young age. We're programming these kids to be sexualized throughout their life, to be victimized. So much of uh, how our children were raised and what they saw and experienced came through a pornified lens. Hypersexualized dance can be what is called a porn substitute, a piece of, they call it. In the pornography industry right now, there's a greater interest in teen models, and so the, the age of, of actors in pornography is decreasing, and that's to try to get more and more kids um, sexualized. The United States is the world's largest producer of child pornography. Young girls are hypersexualized, uh, objectified on stage, and it's being portrayed as normal. A lot of these things exist in the dark and nobody pays attention. We're so busy. All the people that are viewing it decide like, oh, this must be okay if you know they're doing it up on a stage, and obviously that's fine. We have to really uh, be able to shift the focus from entertaining the, the sexual aspect of a person and it's being able to just really express creativity um, and, and have a more, I would say,
a parental perspective on dance. You can see why experts, including dance educators like me, have become alarmed about the harmful outcomes from hypersexualization. I founded Dance to join the voices of those making a difference. Awareness can stop exploitation. Dance Awareness, No Child Exploited has several free online, print, and video resources that will educate people like you to make informed choices and awaken others to the differences between healthy and harmful dance. Visit danceawareness.com and as a start, sign up for our free newsletter. We'll keep you informed about our work and provide easy ways for you to help us spread this message. Dance is dedicated to raising awareness to protect children by creating free research resources to end the hypersexualization of children in dance using adult costumes, choreography, and music. Please join the conversation. Thank you.